Hey everyone, so if you're finding this video, you or your team is probably looking to get started with open telemetry and might not know why or where to start. So what's amazing about open telemetry is that it collects logs, metrics, and traces all under one collector. Now, the other side of open telemetry, which is so great, is the ability to instrument your applications. So if you're trying to understand request flows and maybe where bottlenecks are within your application, open telemetry actually allows you to instrument either your Flask or your Go applications, your Java applications, to be able to forward that data to the collector. Additionally, if your team has ever been worried about vendor lock-in and wants to completely own your data, open telemetry is the best way to do so. Ultimately, I can blab on about open telemetry and what's so great about it, but why don't I just jump in and show you how to get started? Awesome, so when talking about open telemetry, we wanna really view this as a framework, not only to instrument and generate and collect data, but also where we export it, right? So when we look at a diagram of open telemetry as a whole, we can see we have our microservices, our open telemetry collector, and then our observability front ends, as well as APIs or backends we're sending this to. So on the microservice level, which is either maybe your Python applications, your Java, your Go applications, and so forth, you're gonna see that there's the automatic instrumentation, the API and the SDK. Now, if you wanna interact with the API or create manually instrumented services, you're gonna use something like the API or SDK. However, there's also automatic instrumentation. Automatic instrumentation essentially injects bite-sized code into your services to be able to pull trace data and then send them out to the collector. So you can see here that we have the third-party service where we can push data directly from our receivers into, but we can also send it to the collector. So essentially we have our instrumentation, then we have our collector level, and then we can have our third-party services as well. So let's jump in to the actual instrumentation of our services and take a look at what that looks like. So when we go into the language APIs and SDKs, you're gonna see that OpenTelemetry supports many popular programming languages such as C++, Go, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, and so forth. Now in this use case today, I'm actually gonna demonstrate a Python application and how that works specifically. So if we click on Python, you're gonna see that we have a getting started page an instrumentation and then automatic. Getting started is gonna give us everything we need in terms of the installation steps. And we can just run Python 3, create a virtual environment, pip install a few packages, and then we can just create and launch an HTTP server. Now we also have to install our pip packages for the instrumentation side of things. And then we have our command to run our Flask application or our Python application with OpenTelemetry auto instrumentation. So if I want to look at the manual instrumentation side of the house, what we can do is actually import some batch span processor libraries as well as a console span exporter and then forward those traces. And this allows us to actually create our own spans and track whatever we want in terms of tracing. But if I wanna just get started with automatic instrumentation, it's really straightforward, right? All I have to do is run the setup instructions that I see here, configure the agent, and then these will be forwarded. So if I jump over into the application side, you can see that I am running a Flask application. I have four microservices, which is my notification gateway, order management, portal, and product. The portal sits as our front end for this Flask application. So you can see I have some functions here. When I go to the order endpoint, we're doing a bunch of things. We're getting the product uh, inventory from our other microservice. And then we also handle post requests whenever we want to actually create an order, right? So what does this do? It logs to a file as well. And then we're gonna use OpenTelemetry to actually pull that log data to be able to send it to Logs.io, which is our backend today. So what does this look like? Right now, I don't have any libraries, SDKs or APIs being used uh, at this instrumentation level. What I wanna do is I wanna automatically instrument it. So all I have to do in that case is break this can uh, this command down so we can see it's open telemetry dash instrument and then I am going to wrap a few flags so the traces exporter is going to be the console as well as OTLP 
HTTP, which is the protocol that I'm going to export the traces out to. My service name is going to be portal because that's what I'm tracking the traces of here. And then my exporter is going to point at localhost 4318 and then run my Python app.py file, which is this here. So let's take a look at what this does when I run it in my command line. So I'm in my portal service, I'm gonna run this command and we can see that my Flask application is gonna start on port 5001. Now, if I jump back into this and go to 127.5001, you can see that my application loads up nice here in the browser. So when I go here, you're gonna see that I get uh, spans that are exported from my application. If I click on order car, you're gonna see that I am also getting services. And then on top of that, I'm getting my spans alongside with it. So that's good, right? Because now this is exporting the data that I need, not only to the console, but it should be working through OTLP. So how does our collector now take this data and ship it off to Logs.io? So if we look at the OpenTelemetry config here, you're gonna see that we have receivers, exporters, and processors. These are kind of the three big things when we look at OpenTelemetry's configuration. If you're curious about the documentation, what you can do is actually go into the collector and click on configuration. It's gonna break down the structure, which is receivers, processors, and exporters. Now, if we click on receivers, you're gonna see this is how we actually collect that data. So whether it's through a protocol, an endpoint, um, whether it's through a specific port, whether it's through Prometheus, whatever it may be, or a file, we can collect it with OpenTelemetry. Then it gets shipped off to what's called the processor level, if you so wish to have one. This is going to transform your data. So let's say you wanna add fields to your log data, maybe you wanna manipulate fields and change the names of it that are coming in. You can do that, right? So you can see here we're changing or we're inserting a key value pair, which is environment production here. And then we're also doing some filtering to be able to limit the amount of metrics we send in, as well as memory limiting and so forth. Once that's done, what we do is we ship it off to the exporter. So the exporter is where we actually want to send this data. So our destination, right? In our case, it's Logs.io. Now, when shipping data to Logs.io through OpenTelemetry, what you'll want to use is the OpenTelemetry contrib. So if we go on OpenTelemetry's GitHub, which is a project backed by the CNCF, you're gonna see that if you scroll down, there's actually something called the collector contrib. There's many versions of this. You can see 0.92 is the latest released two weeks ago. But if you click on exporters, you're gonna see that Logs.io exporter is written here with some documentation on how to ship to Logs.io, specifically traces and logging. But you can see we already have that configured here. So we have our Logs.io traces exporter, which is a account token, and then logs, which is another account token. So tracing and logging have two different tokens in Logs.io. Now, if we look at our pipelines, this is essentially what we're executing, right? So at the service level, what we're saying is, okay, let's create two pipelines, a trace pipeline and a logging. The receiver for the tracing is gonna be OTLP, because if you remember then the command I ran for my Python application, it's running on 4318 as the port. Now, if I go back into the config, you can see this matches which, with my HTTP OTLP protocol. So I'm receiving that data coming from my application. What's happening then is I'm going it through a batch processor and then I'm exporting it to Logs.io traces, which is my tracing token in Logs.io. Logs, the same deal, right? So the file log, which is collecting this path, and if we look at this portal log, you can see that it has data in it. And then you can see that we're exporting this. We're not putting it through any batch processor or any rename processor memory limiter. We're just exporting it right to Logs.io. So what does this actually look like, right? When we go into Logs.io itself, in the left-hand side, we're gonna to toggle on the auto shop account, which is where I'm sending this data. This is where my logging token is tracked to. So you can see that when I look at the auto shop, 
we're getting data in for this specifically, which is good, right? Because that's where we want to ship our data off to. So what are we doing now? We're sending data to Logs.io from our receivers, which are our trace data and our log data. If we go into tracing specifically and click on our services, we're gonna see that we have our portal service coming in. So not only that, traces are now being generated. So this is how open telemetry works, right? It receives data, captures it through the collector and then sends it out to your open telemetry backend.